I'd like to welcome Radek Przedpełski, who is an artist and uh, art philosophy scholar working at the Trinity College in Dublin. And uh, I would like to tell that um, we are uh, waiting for the monograph that um, is, uh, is going to be a part of his PhD, which was on the 70s in the Polish People Republic, especially on the art of Marek Konieczny. Uh, but he published uh, a book on the Les Guattari and uh, Art uh, of Multiplicity by Edinburgh, Edinburgh University Press. He's also a member of Substantial Motion Research Network um, and, uh, and curator um, um, of the annual Small File Media Festival hosted by but, but SFU School of the Creative Arts. Um, he's also interested in entanglements between the earth and the cosmos and artistic techniques. Welcome, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks so much. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I'm delighted of, uh, to be here. Uh, I want to extend my thanks first and foremost to Zhuzha. Um, I'm so glad uh, to be here. And i also like to take this opportunity to um, thank uh, Ms. Uh, Karina Garstetska at the uh, Forschungsstelle uh, Ost Europa in uh, Bremen, uh, who helped me with my archival research on Marek Konieczny. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to uh, uh, thank Edith Andras for her support. Um, okay, uh, so uh, my presentation uh, is going to be on um, cultural transfers uh, between uh, Marek Konieczny and Klaus Gros. Uh, I'm going to focus on 1970s. And uh, the plan is uh, for this presentation to be a kind of very detailed micro-history of this intimate um, artistic um, uh, relation and um, a kind of um, exchange of correspondence. But I'm also going to use this as a ground for making a couple of interventions in terms of concept making. So how does um, a um, case study at hand can help us create some concepts that illuminate the notion of cultural transfer. Um, okay, so uh, the title is Chain of Individual Initiations, Rhythmatic Cultural Transfers, Marek Konieczny, Klaus Gros. Uh, and just a disclaimer, uh, all the images uh, are uh, taken um, uh, from the FSO in Bremen. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with a little introduction uh, of our protagonists. Uh, so uh, Klaus, um, first of all, Marek Konieczny um, is a conceptual artist um, active uh, since 1970s in Poland's People Republic. Um, he was known for uh, creation of this um, singular artistic medium that was called uh, Think Crazy in 1974, and um, unfortunately, Marek uh, passed away um, in uh, this March, so I'm this presentation as a kind of a, um, homage um, to him. Um, and uh, Klaus Grom, um, of course, I'd say, um, needs no introduction, um, um, is an um, artist, um, musician, um, uh, art critic and um, restless animator of um, male art uh, movement um, in uh, Eastern Europe. Um, so uh, I'm going to focus on this um, uh, relationship uh, between the uh, two protagonists. Um, and um, of course, um, this relation goes back to 1973. I'm going to unpack in detail how this um, came about. Um, and I'm going to also make a couple of additional um, interventions. Uh, okay, and this is the image of, um, a, um, uh, it's a still from a six millimeter film um, called uh, 2401 2008, Think Crazy. Um, which um, is um, a kind of an example of this um, uh, beautiful um, uh, 
short experimental film series uh, that uh, are characterized by intense colors and they have very um, uh, also erotic um, motifs um, as well. Um, okay, so instrumental um, in uh, this um, collaboration between Klaus Gros um, from um, West Germany, um, he was born in the city of Oldenburg, uh, but also had a house in Edewecht. Um, uh, so instrumental in this uh, collaboration between the two artists uh, is an initiative of Klaus Gros called um, IAC, International Artists Corporation, which was um, basically a platform for uh, artists to collaborate beyond the national borders. And um, so how did it function? So uh, one of the um, platforms or methods um, was uh, IAC Info, which was um, an information uh, bulletin or a newsletter, if you will, that was uh, published uh, between 1972 and uh, uh, 1977. And um, it was really important because um, it's hard to imagine uh, right now, uh, you know, because there are like lots of concerns about privacy, but what this newsletter actually um, included was uh, details of uh, different, uh, different, uh, the addresses and telephone numbers of different uh, artistic institutions and also uh, people, right? And this, uh, on a practical level, uh, created the very um, condition of possibility of this uh, intense artistic uh, exchange. Uh, um, okay, and uh, another uh, form of IAX activity were artist booklets published throughout the 1970s. So um, usually um, um, Klaus would commission an artist to provide materials for this little booklet. Sometimes they're like, you know, that's that small. Uh, in case of Marek Konieczny, this is literally like something like this. It's really small, it's it's foldable, you know, it's, it's really, uh, almost like looks like a post-it, it's really easy to lose it, you know, uh, because it's kind of, um, um, uh, so what it is basically, it features uh, a series of uh, stamps with uh, flowers and it's labeled pre-decisional process, right? Uh, and this is um, um, IAC book number 36. Uh, I think the number one was by Pet Stemberer. Um, um, and it was published by uh, Klaus uh, Gros uh, in 1973, right? But um, I want to tell a little anecdote. How did it came to be that, you know, um, Konieczny got published in, um, as part of IAC? Uh, so, um, and this is the information I got from, from uh, Klaus and also by interviewing uh, Marek Konieczny back in 2017. Um, so um, it happened so that the Marek Konieczny got an information uh, about, um, um, about Klaus uh, from the IAC bulletin in which he identified the um, address um, of Klaus in Edewecht. And uh, strangely enough, without knowing uh, Klaus in person, um, uh, Marek um, made a trip from um, Polish People's Republic uh, to West Germany, um, you know, to meet Klaus without really knowing him. It was a kind of um, characteristic of Marek's, Marek's activities that were uh, very frequently um, um, to do with stochastic processes and randomness, right? So uh, this trip, you know, going to meet somebody without really knowing him, um, a kind of a blind date, if you will. Um, it's, it's also kind of typical of uh, uh, Marek's uh, uh, practices. Um, so um, when uh, Marek uh, visited uh, Klaus in Edewecht, uh, this uh, great friendship ensued. Um, and of course, Klaus, um, um, took, took him in, um, you know, not knowing him before, which was really interesting. 
um, and uh, an intense um, um, email, sorry, email. Um, I'd say we can say that mail art is a kind of uh, email art avant la lettre. Um, but um, anyway, uh, so intense um, exchange of correspondence uh, ensued from uh, 1973, and it lasted uh, up until um, 2012, when uh, Konieczny had a major retrospective um, hosted by the Zahenta uh, Art Gallery. Um, and, and after that, um, unfortunately, um, it uh, stopped. Right. Uh, so, um, and one of the uh, initial um, postcards in, in this correspondence uh, revolve around uh, the question of Marek's uh, publication of this uh, small booklet with with Ayak. Right. So, um, like the the first uh, postcards dated from uh, 1973 are kind of really a matter of fact. Uh, and then uh, later on, what appears um, is a type of um, correspondence that um, is on the threshold of you know, personal correspondence and art. Um, each um, postcard was custom made. Uh, there are different series. For example, this is the red series from the early 1970s that are uh, always on this red paper, and there are like uh, special uh, little touches that recur throughout those series. For example, uh, this one uh, has a, a motif of uh, a pyramid, which will become actually crucial um, in Think Crazy series um, uh, in 1975, right? Uh, so there's a communication uh, between uh, Marek and Klaus always revolved around uh, as, uh, some sort of uh, different themes. Um, it was never matter of fact, but it rather um, focused on different key uh, points um, um, and uh, that established this kind of um, condition of possibility of um, this um, artistic dialogue. Uh, so, for example, when you uh, look at this um, postcard, uh, Marek Konieczny is writing, Dear Klaus, I listen, it, this is the original English, right? Uh, broken English. I am listen Pink Freud and remember stay at your home. I want to thank you once more that I could stay in your home. It was a great help for me that you were there. Uh, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm sending playing cards for your collection. Uh, Igor, his son, is collecting stones. Now he's camping. After returning home, he will write to Malta. I'm kissing you, dear people. And there's this really characteristic of this intensely affectionate relationship uh, between um, Klaus and Marek. Um, and uh, what's really interesting uh, for me um, is this uh, emphasis on music. And, um, and this is uh, why uh, I put this uh, image as a kind of visual motif here, which is um, taken from 1970s. Uh, it features both um, uh, Klaus and Marek, which are focusing on a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. So uh, as I see it, perhaps in, in reference to uh, Tomasz's intervention on video art, for me, this um, tape recorder is a figure of cultural transfer because what's at stake here, it's not a repetition of what came before, but rather what's on the tape um, is something that catalyzes desire and produces those uh, intense connections. So we can say that the magnetic um, particles on the tape and the processes of remagnetization correspond to the uh, libidinal investment. So I'm getting really Deleuzean and uh, Freudian here, but I think it's also really important to have this um, perspective. Um, okay, now um, another element that was really uh, important uh, for, um, for uh, Marek Konieczny is um, the possibility to uh, organize interventions 
in uh, Klaus um, Garden uh, in Edewecht. Um, and um, not only um, actually uh, Marek exhibited there and made interventions there, uh, this is, uh, for example, an image uh, that uh, uh, features uh, Wanda Gokowska's special intervention. She's really well known, um, amazing artist, uh, and uh, also uh, Jan Hwauczyk, Andrzej uh, Dudek Durer were exhibiting there. And um, we are talking today lots about uh, regions, uh, territories, but I'm also pleased that uh, the notion of deterritorialization uh, was used. And uh, for me, this uh, garden in uh, um, Klaus's um, uh, place uh, epitomizes for me this notion of deterritorialization. So uh, it's the, the power to uh, use some um, territory to uh, invest it with desire to uh, um, signal a possibility for, for change, right? Um, and this is something that uh, Marek Konieczny did with the space. Uh, you can notice that there's the kind of uh, uh, pine tree to the left and uh, back in 1974, um, he, um, together with Klaus, uh, organized this uh, intervention, Sierpniowe Boże Narodzenie, August Christmas, were uh, in the middle of August, they uh, decorated the pine tree with you know, your usual uh, Christmas uh, paraphernalia. And uh, we can see it as a sort of detournement uh, in the situation a sense, but uh, above all, it's a question of uh, changing you know, this normative cliches or, or kind of accumulated uh, thought patterns, um, and this is also um, uh, an image that shows uh, Marek Konieczny uh, together with, um, with um, Klaus, right? There's this kind of really relaxed setting, and this uh, also has this kind of, um, kind of uh, liberatory erotic aspect. It's almost like this kind of uh, the new Eden, so to speak. Uh, it's really um, subversive in a way. Um, and uh, now in my work, I have argued that the August Christmas um, and its uh, deterritorialization, it's something that actually made possible uh, um, the subsequent um, uh, idiom of think crazy. Uh, and this is um, a really a beautiful postcard uh, from um, the beginning of 1974 when we uh, are moving past this uh, intensely um, saturated, you know, red series. And um, what um, appears here, um, it's uh, this reproduction of a portrait of a Polish uh, nobleman from 17th century. And uh, Marek, it's a kind of a collage. He made an intervention around this um, in the area of the mustache. So he kind of changed the mustache in order to look like him. And um, what's really interesting for me, it's the motto that you have uh, see here, which is time is going back. This is me in my preceding edition, right? So it's, it changes the scope between the serialization of predecisional process towards an interest in art as an untimely operation that works on time, um, uh, against time, and for the benefit of a time to come, uh, as Nietzsche said. And this actually resonates uh, with uh, what Edith was uh, hinting at, the notion of art as chronopolitics. And um, this paved the way for this um, uh, Think Crazy video series that uses uh, Baroque motifs uh, from um, 17th uh, century art. It uh, uses uh, schlag metal and uh, real gold uh, to cover different um, zones um, uh, of the body and stage a contact with them, right? So as I understand um, it, uh, it's an operation on the notion of time, that you can have an avant neo-avant-garde 
which is at the same time focused or counter actualizes the, the past, which is really interesting because we are not uh, thinking about neo avant garde as something that takes time as its proper material. Um, okay, so I'm going to conclude that uh, there are two propositions that could be made in order to illuminate those, uh, this contact between Marek Konieczny and uh, uh, Klaus Gros. Uh, the first uh, comes from uh, Deleuze's book on Spinoza, when uh, he comes up with the definition of the body which is not defined to according to uh, how a body looks like or how a body functions, right? So it means, in the context of Eastern Europe, it means that we are not defined by these regions, right? But rather, uh, the body is defined by the relations of motion and rest between particles. And uh, secondly, uh, by affect, which is uh, how uh, a body affects other bodies. Uh, so it's about the potentiality uh, that um, we have and each, that there are different potentialities under each determinate social cultural um, assemblage, uh, however restrictive it might be. So uh, my argument is that uh, you, uh, I see this functioning of affect um, in the relation between uh, Klaus um, and Marek and last but not least, I know that uh, I need to finish. Um, uh, uh, another concept which is really useful is uh, um, the rhizome, which is a way of connecting, which um, offers multiple entry points, and this is a mode of connection which is not hierarchical, right? So going, cycling back to the relationship between Marek and Klaus, we can see that, you know, little things like the garden, interest in music, all become um, multiple alternative entry points that um, ultimately, in the case of Marek, uh, propel him uh, on this change from pre-decisional process, which is still about this conceptual serialization, towards an art which is very much working on the level of uh, chronopolitics. So uh, I... Uh, close with this image of an iris rhizome, uh, which I think is really beautiful, and uh, that's it. Uh, I hope uh, it was interesting.